He was working the Pentagon, and they were helpful. Um, getting you to the right hospital, getting you out of Ukraine, getting you on a train, the Polish prime minister allowing that to happen, mm -hmm. breaking all protocols, I believe, to do that. People, you know, our friend Scotty, all these people, I, I was getting regular updates that probably I wasn't supposed to get, but I was so nosy and pushy. I just wanted to know that you were going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And the second she found out, the very second she found out, she picked up the phone and she called Sarah Varado, who founded Save Our Allies. Something has happened in Ukraine. We need people to go in. Can you help? And she said, I've got the best people in Poland. And immediately, that minute, they were looking for us. They had our pictures out there. They had the license plates out there. They were looking at ways in and out of the country. They put this team together. The, these the Save Our Allies, these are amazing people. No, these people save lives. They're yeah. still doing it today. They got people out of Afghanistan. And they say that, you know, when people need help and need evacuating, when the big forces can't do it, we will go in and save those lives. Uh, and that's what they did for me as well. When I was in hospital and they found me, they didn't know how they were going to get me out. They couldn't drive me because they couldn't remove the big shrapnel in my neck. They couldn't fly me because they couldn't find a, a small runway for a low-flying plane that could safely come in. And they didn't know what to do. And out of nowhere, U.S. intelligence, we found out that the Polish prime minister was on the first covert visit to go and visit Zelensky. His train was in Kyiv, and if we could get there within the hour, breaking through the, Russian, the, the Ukrainian lines in the middle of the night, during a 72-hour curfew, when not a car was supposed to be on the street, we could go with the Polish prime minister, maybe, if we could get there. And we went through the city in the middle of the dark in this old ambulance, and at every checkpoint, the Ukrainian gunmen came at us sure. out of the car. They thought we were the Russian hit squads coming in to kill Zelensky. They opened up my own wounds. They looked at my injuries they, to make sure I was a real patient. Mm. One after the next, desperately this race to try and get to the Polish prime minister's train. And they didn't have enough pain meds to give me when I left the hospital. And it was at that point that the pain started to really grow. We made it to the train. They managed to finally carry me on. And we had 10 hours. And those were the 10 hours where I had to dig deep, where I could feel pain. They had no medicine for you? No medicine. I, I asked someone at one point if they had anything. And he gave me a couple of Advil, which is all he had. So I, I don't think Advil is appropriate for that moment. But, <laughs> but um, were they maybe the, the 10?